To me, this is the big picture of Bitcoin. This is what's actually going on. All right, welcome to Talking Investing. I am Tom, and as always, this is not financial advice. I want to do a Bitcoin and Bitcoin miner update. We just finished trading on Thursday, April 14th. It is a three-day weekend in the U.S., so the equity markets will be closed for the next three days. Of course, Bitcoin trades 24-7. I wanted to take a look at the miners and take a look at Bitcoin, and I'm going to talk about some different stuff today. So if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and obviously please everybody smash the like button for us it helps the channel a lot appreciate it thanks so let's talk about bitcoin i'm going to start out with looking at the big board as to how the bitcoin miners did and then i'm going to look at the bitcoin charts and i'm going to look at them from a little bit of a different perspective today versus my normal daily updates so we will get to that. First, let's go to the big board. Today was a down day. You can see everything was red with the exception of one. Mawson was up 5.88%. It's the only green one on the board. It was on low volume. I found no reason why it would be up, but it had an up day. And I've said many times lately on the channel, there tends to be one or two outliers for whatever reason. So that had a nice green day. Congratulations if you own Mawson. Otherwise, you were probably red today here because the rest of this board is very red. A lot of these things were down 5%, 6%, 7%. I'll let you guys take a look at the board and you can find the miners you're interested in. I'm just gonna shout a few out. Bitfarms was down 7.37%. A lot of what happened today was giving back everything that we got yesterday. Yesterday was a very green day. Today, Bitcoin basically went down to where it was at the beginning of the day yesterday. So we gave a lot of that back. CleanSpark was down 5%. Hot was down 5%. Hive and Riot were down 6%. So it goes on. So again, I'll let you guys take a look and you can find your Bitcoin miner. But if it, if it wasn't Mawson, then unfortunately today it was red. The good news is yesterday it was probably green. Okay, I want to start out by looking at Bitcoin on the 15 minute time chart. So each one of these candles represents 15 minutes. So you can see this big red candle right here was the candle when the US equity markets opened this morning at 930 Eastern time. So right from the open, Basically, we were straight down right through to the close. So that was the day today. So from the open of the close to the equity markets, basically Bitcoin was down about 4% during the trading day for the Bitcoin miners. So given that Bitcoin was down around 4%, actually these 5, 6, and 7% downturns in the miners was not that bad. And many of them were up more yesterday than they were down today. But nobody likes a giant red day and nobody wanted to see this. And once again, we have retested this line at around $37,000. So at the moment, on the 15 minute time frame, you can see we've hit this many candles in a row and we've bounced off it to the upside a little bit right now, too soon to make any conclusions. What I wanna do today is just zoom out and focus a little bit more on the big picture because I will tell you, based on the comments I'm reading and based on the comments on my disc Cord, as well as the fact that I just finished a live stream, I can tell that a lot of investors out there are feeling very unsettled, frustrated, exhausted. So I want to take a step back and just put things into the perspective as I see them. So the first thing I'm going to do quickly is look at Bitcoin on the four hour chart, because basically what I just want to show you is this was Tuesday. So we went up on Wednesday and back down on Thursday. So this felt like massive volatility, but you can see really since April 11th, which was Monday, we've really just been basically treading along this line of support. And for the most part, we have held this line of support. And you can see if I scroll out, that goes all the way back to March 16th was the last time we were under that. And at that time we were testing this line of support down at 37,000 and we tested that several times. I'm gonna zoom out one more time. This is the chart I wanna focus on. So I just wanna to try to reset everybody's expectations. 2021 was a year where it started out with a massive boom to the upside for Bitcoin. We're used to these four year cycles. Everybody thought we were gonna have a blow off top and go over 100,000 or 150,000. And then that did not happen. It particularly got to a boiling point when Plan B came out and gave a series of predictions all the way through December. And for the first three months, it looked like he was on track. And if his predictions were on track, I think we we're gonna end up at like 135,000 or 148,000 by December of 2021. So obviously in November, either October or November, we fell off of that schedule and we fell off of it 
drastically. Bitcoin peaked at $69,000 on November 9th, and it's it has not been anywhere near that since. So, so we spent all of 2021 anticipating 100,000 only to end the year with about a six or eight week downward spiral that ended up in hitting a low of $33,000 on January 24th of 2022. We then hit $34,000 a month later on February 24th of 2022. So that was a very big reset. Everybody needs to shift away from this What's your price target for this Friday? What's your price target for this month? And take a look at the bigger picture of Bitcoin. And do you still believe in the Bitcoin narrative? Is Bitcoin doing in the big picture what you think it's doing? So I like to compare this to a company. A lot of times there'll be a company that's executing very well, but their stock is performing poorly. And there's a lot of different reasons that that could happen. If you believe in a company and they're doing what you want them to do, and their stock is performing poorly, for me, I look at that as a discount on their stock price. And that is an opportunity to buy. Remember, we want to buy low and sell high. So if the market is giving us a low number for some reason, whatever the reason is, if it's a stock or in this case, a cryptocurrency that you believe in, then that is an opportunity to dollar cost average in. That's how I'm viewing the last six months. And I don't know when that magic moment is. I do think at some point there's a lot of catalysts out there that can send Bitcoin off and running. Right now, none of them have happened. And if they do and when they do, it may just take one for the institutions to start pouring in and and once the floodgates open, I do think we're going to have another FOMO moment where Bitcoin is off to the races. The problem is none of us know what that moment is. So in the meantime, the best we can do is dollar cost average in. So from my perspective, and again, this is not financial advice. You guys have to do whatever you're comfortable with. But I can tell you, I am taking the approach with Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners that they are on sale right now. And every time they go down, I'm dollar cost averaging in. Now, I know we don't have all unlimited resources, and I certainly don't. So there's only a limit to how much you can dollar cost average in. But to whatever extent I can, for the miners that I believe in the most, I am averaging in still. And what I wanted to show with this chart is basically I've taken all the other lines off. There's two blue lines. This dates back to January 13th. So this is basically all of the year 2022. You can see I've added an arrow. This is basically an upward channel. You know, we went down and then up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then down. And everybody's getting dizzy and exhausted. But you can see all the while this arrow is moving upward. So we have been an upward trend for the better part of three months now. It's not as fast as any of us would like it to be. You know, we did get to this $48,000 line, which was a critical point. So that turned out to be resistance. And now we went all the way back down and we're testing some lines of support. But so far we are still within this channel and we are still headed in an upward direction. Even if we were to fall out of this channel for a short period of time, because there is a line down here at around 37,000 ish, that is a big line of support. So it's possible we may break out of this for a moment and touch that line. But for as long as we're heading in this direction, to me, Bitcoin is moving in the right direction. It's moving slower than we want it to move, but this is a positive indication. And and in the, in the bigger picture, all the other things that we want Bitcoin to be doing are happening. Here's the things that are holding it back in my opinion. Number one, regulations. In the United States, there was an executive order put out and all of the agencies are going to be looking to get together and create some regulations regarding cryptocurrency for the U.S. So that is out there. That has to happen. That is something that's going to happen. Whether you like it or you don't like it, this will be regulated in some way. So right now it is not regulated and it's an uncertainty. What we want to do is get this process over with. So that executive order was the beginning of a process that's going to be a healthy process at the end of which there will be a piece of uncertainty taken off of the table. And that is what we're looking for. Another giant catalyst that's been delayed, the SEC has denied and denied and denied an ETF for Bitcoin. So at some point that will change in my opinion. Grayscale, I think, may be the one that has enough leverage to make that happen, but we will see. There's really, they have a Bitcoin futures ETF, but they will not do a Bitcoin spot ETF, which I can't find any line of reasoning in. I know they wanna delay it, but in my opinion, it is inevitable. So that is another gigantic catalyst. Right now, there's a lot of FUD being spread regarding ESG, mostly E, energy, with the Bitcoin miners. So there's a lot of misinformation out there, and we're going through a learning curve. 
So as we work through that, that is not going to last forever either, in my opinion, because the fact is most of the Bitcoin miners are very conscious environmentally and they are mostly green. So eventually that truth will come out. So some combination of these things, when, when we've figured out and standardized what, what the ESG expectations are, when the government has implemented their regulations, when the Bitcoin ETF is launched, those are all things that are gonna put Bitcoin past their critical mass here. And, and that is when Bitcoin is gonna take off. So the question is, we don't know when those things are gonna happen. We don't know when the first or second or third one is gonna happen, but, but I look at all those and say, you know what, a year from now, we'll probably be past all of those things. So I think that's the time frame and the perspective that everybody needs to have on Bitcoin at this point. It's holding its own. It does seem to be trending upward. And any pullback I'm viewing as a buying opportunity because again, all those things are gonna happen in all likelihood and those are all catalysts. And the biggest one of them all may be ESG because there's somewhere estimated to be $20 trillion on the sidelines, not in cryptocurrencies and not in the Bitcoin miners because of the ESG factor. So when that is properly quantified and everybody is satisfied that the miners are doing the right thing, Money is going to move into this space in a big way. The institutions have only just begun to move their money in. In addition, I just saw a study that 75% of money managers said that if there was a Bitcoin ETF or a cryptocurrency ETF, they would be putting their clients into that. So that's 75%. So once 75% of them do it, you're going to get close to 100% adoption there as well. So there's a lot of massive catalysts coming. So I'm kind of zooming out right now. So I'm going to call this plan Z. And I think people should try to remember this. It's very hard and painful on red days to remember these things. But to me, this is the big picture of Bitcoin. This is what's actually going on. I'm actually not going to go through any Bitcoin miner charts because it's a three-day weekend. There's no trading of the Bitcoin miners tomorrow in the United States. And I will tell you, all of them are in a very similar situation. They're all very near their 52-week low, and they are all drastically off of their 52-week high. So if I were to flip from chart to chart to chart, they would all look very similar. So at the moment, you know, today was a down day. And I think it's more important to just reflect over the long weekend and kind of reset our expectations. This is not 2021. We're not on plan B anymore. However, Bitcoin is doing all the things that it needs to do. The adoption is occurring at every level. The Lightning Network is a massive catalyst as well. So there's a lot of positive news out there. So this is like the company that I'm talking about that's doing all the right things, but the stock is going down. So... For me, this is a buying opportunity, and I will continue to look at it that way unless or until something significant changes to change the narrative of what's happening in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So again, please, this is not financial advice. I'm trying to give you guys a big picture view of how I'm looking at Bitcoin in specific and as a function of that, the Bitcoin miners. So that's all I got today. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and do us a favor and smash the like button. I hope everybody enjoys your long weekend and thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.